all over the world. There's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory
said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Always when I come into his house, I find encouragement. I find a joy. I find an uplift to be in the house of the Lord with my brothers and sisters. Psalm 133 says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren. That includes the cistern. To dwell together in unity and in harmony. And at the end, it says these words. For there, the Lord commandeth the blessing, even life forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. (laughs) Guys did a wonderful job. And the girls. And even Norman. It's Norman over there. Hallelujah. Wonderful job. I'll tell you, the praise and worship team, they always, I don't know, just sometimes it, for me, it's the words of a song. It encourages me and just gives me that, that lift that I need. How many need a, a lift this morning? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I need a lift this morning. And, but I know where we can find it. And we can all find it in the same place. We can all find it in the same person. And his name is Jesus Christ. We serve a good Wonderful Jesus, a wonderful friend who is closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer for whatever need we have today. If you're searching, you're not going to find it in big houses. You're not going to find it in a lake house or a mountain house. You're not going to find it in big cars, fast cars. You're not going to find it in a few dollars here and there. A few dollars here and there is nice. I like a few dollars, don't you? But you know, the only place that we can find real satisfaction in life is in our relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, this is not a religion. It's a relationship with him. And when you find that, you hold on to it. And I'm just so thankful for the day that I found Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And I'm so grateful that he's kept me all these years. I was 19 long time ago. I'm 70 now. I'm not as old as some of the people here today, but I am climbing the ladder, so I'm thankful for his faithfulness and his love and his kindness to me. Praise God. Good to see all you first-time visitors. We've got uh, two first-time visitors with us today. Three, let me see. Three, four. I didn't see you sitting behind it. Stephen, he's put on a little bit of weight since the last time I saw him. (laughs) But it's good to have you folks, and welcome to Family Life Church, and we pray that you'll receive a blessing, and that you won't leave here the same as you came, but wonderfully changed in his precious name. Marcy has been playing soccer for the last three weeks. (laughs) So I haven't said, how many weeks? Yeah, but (laughs) she's playing, you're playing. And, uh, but she brought a friend with her today, so welcome, and we pray that you'll enjoy it uh, also. Nancy's brought a pal with her today, and it's good to have him with us, Adam. And uh, I just pray every one of you just enjoy yourselves. We've been busy at the church. As you know, we've been working Operation Christmas Child, which is the shoe boxes that people hear about, and uh, people pack them up, and... and <coughs> These boxes go all over the world. Ours are mostly going to Africa. And uh, we, the, you, you pack them up and you bring them in. Most of you have done it. And we were chosen as a, a pickup church or a drop-off point. And uh, there's been 1,700 and... Let me see if I've got it here. 1,727 shoe boxes received here. And uh, I'll tell you the joy that it brings and the people that are coming in that we've met and 
and just uh, fell in love with it from different churches and the desire that they have to, to fill these boxes to bring a little bit of joy into the children's hearts and lives. Michelle Martin and Kim Clark headed our team up here. They recruited uh, Michelle's husband, Richard, and they've been here all week with a couple of volunteers each day, and it's been such a blessing. I would like for you to remember one girl. Her name is Madison, and uh, she's a young lady, actually, and she had a, a not a tumor, but uh, aneurysm in her brain, and uh, beautiful, yep, blonde, tall, young lady, and sweet, she had a little dog, a little Yorkie, black Yorkie, and it really touched my life when I met her, and she came with her mother, Susan, and uh, she'd done up uh, some boxes for the kiddies, and uh, I told her that I would promise that I would, we'd be praying for her, promised her that. So as a church, they helped me keep that promise. Her name's Madison. Just pray. She's, she's had brain operation and a beautiful girl. Madison is her name. See, we, the Lord knows, doesn't he? He's a healing God. We've been singing about it this morning. We're singing about healing my heart. He's healed my heart. Made me whole. I'll know on Monday <laughs> how whole it is. But uh, God is good. He has done us well. So remember Madison, please, in your prayers. And also we've got a couple of announcements for to remember the dates coming up. And I want you to remember also Gail, um, who decorates our Christmas tree with her sister every year. And they get a couple of friends to help them, their husbands normally. Uh, she was putting a star on a, on a, on a her tree at home and she fell and she really hurt herself. So pray for Gail Baylor too. Praise God. And for her substitute, I believe, is going to be Donna Rose this year coming to help Joy to do the, the Christmas decorations. They do a fantastic job. So remember, Gail, in your prayers. Also, in the tithes and offerings, you've been so faithful. We've been putting out a lot of money, extra money. And uh, if you've uh, got any extra there, just put it in and put it in the love offering or wherever. But uh, Bill will show you. We have envelopes behind the seats. I came up a little bit short on our mission for uh, Kabali School for their Christmas party. We come up a little bit short with the commitment that I had made. So if you feel led to give in the love offering today, anything in the love offering will go towards Kabali School. I have one here that was given in uh, for the love offering and for the school in Uganda. So just put that in every single cent that goes for the love offering today will go towards Kabali School. Pardon? Can we do a pledge? Yes, your, your credit's good, Joy. You can make the pledge as big as you want. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your credit is good here, Joy. Praise God. Yeah, do a pledge, and we'll get it in, and we'll get the check away to help them at Kabali School. Pastor, yes. How much short is? I'm working with my friends. Well, I'm 5'5". Five five. I'm not too sure of the figure. <laughs> but it is short. It is short. So any, any it's about there. Uh, I think I'm about uh, uh, about three hundred dollars short. Okay. So, but it'll come. God will provide. Amen. But I just like I always let the need be known here, and that's all I need to do. Don't have to beg for anything. God provides. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're excited to to be able to help in in that area. Also, I'm going to get my youngest daughter my baby, to come and make the announcements of dates to remember. And uh, I want you to write these down, very important dates. And uh, I'm excited. And uh, she'll come, come on. Sweet, this is sweet Bonnie, Bonnie Lee. Yeah. And she's a great help to me and the church. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I did want to mention that I got to help um, one day this week with the Operation Christmas Child, um, and it was truly a blessing to be there. And Michelle and Kim had everything so well organized, and it was a it was just a great time of fellowship together. So you know, today's the last day. I think that they need volunteers for tomorrow morning too. 
Yeah. But it, so if you have a chance this um, year to do it, if you don't have a chance this year to do it, make sure that you join them with them next year because they really did. It was they had everything. It was so easy to to come alongside them and do it because they had everything so well organized. And um, I don't think that Richard gets enough credit because he really was the muscle behind it all. Um, and he has worked so hard every day. And those boxes are, they are heavy. So, and he's, he's been, he had to lift for all of us because it was all women and then um, Richard when I was there. So he was lifting for all of us. And when you get 16 of those shoe boxes in a box, it's not a, it's not a lightweight to move. So thanks for all you've done, Richard, Michelle, and Kim. It's been really fun to be part of. Um, and so I wanted to give you guys a couple of dates to remember in December. Uh, so first off, we've got uh, the kids have been working really, really hard on a Christmas play already. Um, they are so excited to share it with you guys. It's going to be December 17th, and it's going to be during the Sunday morning service. And immediately following the service, we're going to have the Christmas luncheon. So this year, we're going to do it at um, the crossing or the depot uh, for people who have lived in the area for a long time in downtown Norcross. So we've rented out that space. Um, as soon as church is over, we'll provide the um, address for everyone that doesn't know where it is. And you guys can uh, head that way, and we're going to have a Christmas lunch in there. So we are very excited. Uh, to do that so we'll have the Christmas play and then the Christmas luncheon and then the next week is Christmas Eve and on Christmas Eve we are going to um, we have a very special service that we do on Christmas Eve every year and since Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday we're gonna just have the 5 p.m. Christmas Eve service that day so that we can get everyone ready for um, their acts and then also we have um, hors d'oeuvres afterwards so just so it gives time to get everything ready for that we're going to have the 5 p.m christmas eve service on december 24th so those are some important dates to remember in december and we look forward to um sharing with you guys with those things amen well done yes i have it for a question that's good so we're we're taking over the whole restaurant but what bonnie did forget that she was supposed to tell you, you have to get a ticket. Now, the ticket won't cost you anything, but we have to have numbers, which I'm sure you understand. And if you're able to come, we'll be delighted to see you there. It's going to be a, a beautiful, beautiful meal. Uh, we have a, a really nice, uh, uh, what do you call it, menu. And it will be first class. So uh, it's our way of saying thank you to you all and for us to bless you during the Christmas time. So that's, you're invited. It doesn't cost you nothing, but you must get a ticket. See Bonnie about that. If you're coming, please let us know ahead of time. All right? So praise God. And I have another special announcement. There's a young lady here today. She started coming to church with her parents when she was four years old, or maybe just a little less than that. She was so tall, I recognized her talent right away. But she was so talented, she used to uh, read the Christmas story every year from when she was four years old and did an awesome job in our Christmas Eve service. Bonnie mentioned the Christmas Eve service at five o'clock on Christmas Eve. Did anyone know the date? 24th. Well done, Mary. Well done. The 24th, Christmas Eve, there'll be no service that Sunday morning. All right, because a lot of people have got things planned with their families. So we're having a Christmas Eve service, and there's some folks come from the neighborhood, some don't even know the Lord, and it's a wonderful opportunity to, uh, for us to evangelize. And Maggie's putting on a really nice meal afterwards, or d'oeuvres and different things, so uh, you won't leave here hungry on December the 24th, Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock. Amen? Praise the Lord. But this little girl, little girl, came along. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they'll go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Well, she has been accepted by Georgia at their early admission. Right? Early admission. It's a great honor. 
and she's done well, and she leaves, received great honors and was accepted, and they called me and asked if I had 10 more people like her. But I said, no, we just got the one at the moment. <laughs> she'll have to do, but she'll cover 10 young people for you. So Sarah Kate, would you just come up a second? She might be doing the Christmas story this year, too. I'm not too sure. But this is, as you see, she's... I stopped growing, but she kept on going. So there's a message there somewhere. But we love you, Sarah Kate. And I just want to pray with you, with your church. I'm so grateful for you and the testimony that you have and the testimony that your family have in this church. You've been a great example of a beautiful young lady. And I know that you're going to even go further. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for your passion for the Lord. And I just ask that the Lord will touch you, bless you. He'll lead you and guide you, and he'll direct your paths. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will bring you through, not any old way, Sarah Kate, but victorious in his precious name. We give thanks for you and your family, and we ask his blessing upon you today as a church, as your church, as your family. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well done. Amen. If she gets any taller, I'll have to kiss her on the shoulder. <laughs> Can hardly reach her cheek. Praise God. Isn't God good? Yes. Hallelujah. Thinking about this weekend, how many knows what week this is? What is it? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It's a time and an opportunity for us to be thankful for. And I heard someone say that, you know, why we have Thanksgiving before Christmas is an opportunity for us to give thanks for when Jesus comes. And for me, that's one of the best things that I can be thankful for. There's many things I can be thankful for and give him thanks for. But today, I want to also remember him for all that he's done for us, all he's done for me, how he's taken care of me, kept his hand upon me, and I uh, just want to give him thanks today. And I'm going to ask about four volunteers. You've got one minute, which is 60 seconds, to give them thanks. You can say what you want in that 60 seconds, but once the 60 seconds is gone, I want you to sit down. All right? Because I've got, I want to have four people. Just you stand, and I'll ask you when the time comes to give thanks. If you want to give thanks for the Lord for something just special, because I know I want to give him thanks this morning. I'm going to read a scripture to you just before these folks give thanks. And it's from Psalm 100. And it says, Make a, a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Verses 4 and 5, listen to the words here for us. Advice for us. This is good advice. When you get advice from the word of the Lord, and I, I want to use it and apply it. It's all right to hear it, but if you don't apply it, it's like you just knowledge to yourself. But if you apply it, it can minister to many. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. I pray the Lord will add a blessing to the reading of his word. So the first four people that stand and would like voluntarily to give thanks. Okay, one, two, any more? Sure. Three, any more? One more. I need one more. Well done. All right. I'm going to start off with Faye Marie. Faye Marie, this is your life. I am so thankful for this church. I don't want to cry this at my makeup, but <laughs> I love everyone here. I passed the... My 60 seconds is up. I'm grateful that I thought I was going to die a year ago. And the transplant was all that we have so much, seven, almost 700,000 
all of you, and I'm really, really appreciate all of you. Thank you for your prayers. All of you, and speaking about all of you, through your love for the Lord, and He placed that love for you that you have for others. We never want to lose that, is to be able to help people along the way, to encourage them along the way, and just be a blessing to others. Thank you all for who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness and your tithes and your offerings and your giving and your giving of your time and effort. People come and fix things around the church. And that's just, I'm just so blessed to know each and every one of you. And the theme there is that all of us have a part to play. Each and one of you have that part to play. Some people will come in that door and they won't listen to the, what the message is. They won't listen to the songs. But maybe it'll just be a wee pat in the back or a bit of encouragement for those that come under Catherine and do our hospitality hour. You're such a blessing. I'm going to have a prayer for us just to watch for a minute. Sometimes it's good just to focus on what we're thankful for today. So I'm going to ask for lights, Camera, action. Listen to the words of this prayer. That's our focus today. I don't know what you came to do this morning, but I came to praise the Lord. Turn with me in your Bibles, please, to Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. It says in the, the word, John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world, that's you, he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him that we would not perish but have everlasting life. So with that in mind that the Lord came to die on a cross for you and me because he loved us. I often say the greatest love story ever told. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 28 says these things. Sometimes in some churches they believe that the, the priest or the pastor or someone else examines you. No, you have to examine your own heart and your own life. It says in verse 28, let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink from the cup. What am I saying today? This little piece of bread, you've been given communion by Brother Paul as you come in. And this is our opportunity, you and I, this morning, to focus not on all the other stuff that's going on, maybe all the difficulties that we're having in our lives, and so many of us have. But this is an opportunity right here, right now, for you and I, this is our table that's spread before us. And the table that's carved in the wood in remembrance of me. What are we remembering? Inside this little cup is a little piece of bread. And it's not the body of Christ, but it's symbolic of his body that was broken for you and I. This little piece here. And as we come and we take it and we partake of it, we're remembering the greatest sacrifice that ever was as Jesus gave his life for us on the cross. If he could have got out of it, he would have done. But he knew that this is the only way for you and I to have eternal life in him. So as we give thanks this morning for this little piece of bread, and inside this little cup is juice, red juice, which is symbolic of his blood that was shed for us. So all we're doing is using these things to help us remember that there was a sacrifice given of a broken body and blood shed. So this is your time. This is a time if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is a time for us to get together to remember him for the sacrifice that he made. So Father, we give you thanks for your broken body. We give you thanks, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you are. We give you thanks, Lord, that you did it because you loved us. You loved us so much. You cared for us so much that you were willing to give your life for each and every one of us. So for that, this morning, as we gather together as a corporate body, as we take it as ourselves, just to give you thanks with grateful hearts this morning as we remember you and that great sacrifice you made for each and every one of us. We give you thanks this morning. Amen.
Jesus. That's sweet, Nancy. Wonderful job, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. A couple of things. How many know that the pastor doesn't like pickles? <laughs> Somebody gave me a Christmas present this morning. <laughs> Closs and pickles. I have enough now. I don't need any more. Thank you. No more pickles, please. And also, I would like to uh, let you know that there'll be no prayer meeting this Tuesday. All right? No prayer meeting this Tuesday. So just enjoy your time. And we'll be praying from our own homes and individually. Uh, on Tuesday. We have a prayer meeting every Tuesday at 10 o'clock and uh, have a really nice group of people get together. But we'll be praying separately in our own homes on Tuesday morning. Praise God. Pray every day. Pray every day. Amen. Keeps the doctor away. <laughs> Praise God. Where is he? Pastor Zach? Cole. Give him a big hand as he comes. I used to have hair that long when I first came here. You have a lot to look forward to, Pastor Zach. Hey, hey. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to tell a quick story right quick. Um, I won't keep you long. It's, uh, uh, it's, I, I believe it's fitting for the week for Thanksgiving. Um, back uh, in the Marine Corps days for me. I, I rebelled a little bit. Um, I rebelled a lot, let's be honest. And um, I thought I was uh, running away from God as fast as I could uh, for all these different reasons. But little did I know uh, that God uh, can run faster than me. Um, uh, and just like, I don't know, for those of you who are parents, I'm sure there was a time in your life when you're kid was little and was probably running in the direction that they did not need to be running, like say running towards the road or running towards something danger. And well, they also too found out that you were a faster runner than they were. And you come and you scoop them up and you grab them and put them at the safety. And that's what the Lord did with me. Um, and when I was kind of in this season of life, there was um, this one particular verse that kept popping up out of nowhere. And I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't seeking it out. It just whether I turned on the radio and there was someone on the radio and was all of a sudden started quoting this particular verse. Or I, when I thought, okay, I should probably go to church. And I went to a church in the local area and they were preaching from that verse that day. And I thought, okay, that's a pattern. This is happening. And just over and over again, this verse just out of nowhere would start popping up. And it became a joke to me, like an inside joke with God. Um, his little way of letting me know that uh, he has me. And uh, I'm going to share that verse with you today, and it's going to tie into the theme of Thanksgiving this week. And that is in uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, specifically Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. And it's this passage right here. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. This passage has helped me so much in my life because let's face it, there are many times in life where we might need a little peace. We might need some guards around our life. We might be going through things where everything in this world will tell you, yeah, you probably ought to be anxious. And this passage here is like, it's all how we read scripture and through the tone of his word that we understand what's going on. You know, this isn't a, don't be anxious. You better not be anxious. That's not the tone. The tone is, don't be anxious. 
the law will never say to a sinner to not be anxious. The law will never, ever say to someone who is a sinner to not be anxious. According to the law, you should be anxious about all the things. Only a God that loves and gives his life for sinners would ever say to sinners through the gospel, don't be anxious. Sounds a lot like fear not. Make your requests. What should we request? I mean, think about this. I mean, I've made some silly requests in my life. They're really very trivial. Lord, please let the dogs win. I can't handle another night of, this is me in the 90s and the 80s, you know, a Georgia fan. You know, please, please, please. You know, silly, trivial requests. He'll still listen. Odds, I mean, I could get myself in trouble here, but odds are, I think if you were to ask Jesus if he was right now, like, who do you want to win? He'd probably go, eh. <laughs> That's not his spirit you're hearing. Uh, but I think things like that are like, I just hope y'all have fun. Enjoy. That would probably be his, I don't, I don't think he picks sides and things like that. And think about that. Asking it in Jesus' name for anything. For anything. Why not go big? Why think small like me? Don't think small like me. Go big. With thanksgiving, make your requests. Okay, I'm going to go big. Here are my three requests. I want you to forgive all of my sins. All of them. All of them. And I want you to never leave me ever, ever. And I want to live forever. Think about all those three wishes, right? All those cartoons or all those old stories where they got the three wishes. Go big. I want all of my sins to be consumed. I want to live forever, and I want you to promise that you will never leave me. And the response to all three from a loving, caring God is done, done, and done. You've got it. You will live forever because my son lives forever. Your sins have been conquered and consumed by him. What sins? They're on my son, and I will never leave you. Never, never. What about when I die? You will be with me. And my son, when he returns, your body's going to be back in a body that will not decay, will not die, and will live forever too. How about that? And, and I will give you the kingdom. And here's the marvelous part about all of this. It pleases him to give you these things. It pleases him. And then to go back to this word thanksgiving as we wrap things up, and this is something that just jumped out at me when studying these things. In this text, in the Greek, when we get to the word thanksgiving, the Greek word for here is Eucharistius. And the root word of that word is Eucharist. So for those of you who are familiar, some other churches refer to the Lord's Supper as the Eucharist. Literally, Thanksgiving. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, what did he do before he handed out the bread and wine to those who would betray him? He gave thanks. The Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed gave thanks. It's fun to imagine what specific thanks Jesus gave. Was it thanks over the bread and wine? The same bread and wine that he would attach his declarative word to? 
This is my body. This is my blood broken and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Was it thanks over the plan of salvation? Was it thanks over the eternal provision that was to be given to us? And this kind of provision that was given to us wasn't like what the American colonists went through, through different provisions that they needed. No, in the Lord's Supper, the Lord doesn't serve us up turkey and green bean casserole and cornbread. He serves us up his very self. He provides his very self as our sustenance for permanent, immortal existence. And how can eating and drinking do such great things? And just like in all things, certainly eating and drinking don't do these things. But it's the words. It's the words. Given and shed to you for the forgiveness of your sins. Because whoever believes these words have exactly what they say. Forgiveness of sins. Once again, especially at Thanksgiving, God is the active giver and we are the passive receiver of his gifts. Christ gave thanks and he also gives himself for you. And hear me right now. This is very important. For those of you who may not have given proper thanks, maybe for those of you who maybe consider, well, maybe I haven't been as thankful as I ought to be. Maybe I'm not at the level of thanksgiving that I should have. You're probably right. I know that I haven't even begun, become, begun to plumb the depths of how much I ought to be thankful for the Lord. But here's the wonderful thing about Christ and what he's done for us, specifically on the cross. That when Christ gave thanks, when Christ did all the things, when Christ was the perfect representation of who Zach Cole should have been, on the cross he exchanged all of this perfect thanksgiving, all of this perfect righteousness, all of this perfect doing, he exchanged it to me, and he took all of my sin and consumed it on the cross for me. And he did that for you too. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He takes them. Amen. Will the team come forward, please? Be of good cheer, my son. Your sins are forgiven. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that faith in Jesus is not of yourselves, but it is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. And when he comes, he will not break the bruised reed, nor quench the smoldering wick. And to the one who does not work, but believes in the one who justifies the wicked, his faith is counted as if it were righteousness. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you believe what I have said, that Christ was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, and God has given you faith and he has made you a Christian, and you know that that's hitting you right now. See me or Pastor Derek or Pastor John after this service. We would love to talk about baptism and getting you started in this Christian life. And again, as always, if you're like me and you need to hear the wonderful good news again, well, here it is. Christ was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and by the authority and in the stead of Jesus Christ. I tell you that you have the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. You are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For Christ's sake, this is most certainly true. And fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. God bless you. A thought for you. One of my great desires is let the love of my God flow through me. Let the beauty of Jesus men see. Let the pattern of the sun be the one, the only one that man may see in me. I pray this morning that if anyone has a need in their life, just raise your hand. The Lord knows, but I just want to come in agreement with you, with the church, that the Lord is going to undertake for you and meet you right where he is. I want us to pray for Carol Rutherford, who just needs a special touch in her body. Also for my wife's sister, John, and his wife, Isabel, that the Lord will touch them and meet them and minister to them right where they are. Are there any other needs this morning? I just would like, just raise your hand. The Lord knows the desires of your heart. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you're thinking. Martha, I've got both my hands raised this morning. Father, I just come before you today and your presence has been so beautiful here. You say where two or three are gathered, you're right here with us in the midst. Lord, I just ask you to see our hands this morning needs for Jeff for salvation for the healing that's needed he's made provision for us today if you need a healing in your body the Lord will undertake for you he's faithful he's a good good father and he loves you and he's interested in everything about you so with our hands raised this morning the Lord knows and I just pray that he'll undertake for you and he'll minister to you and that he'll touch you right where you are. I give him thanks this morning for his Holy Spirit to be in this place. And I just pray that he'll meet your need right now in Jesus' name. And I give him thanks with a grateful heart today for this Thanksgiving week as we recognize that we've got so much to be thankful for. And we give him all the praise. We give him all the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless.